Hello everyone. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all in today, today's online seminar and workshop. We are excited to be joined by audiences from different parts of the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. My name is Shokat Ali Khan, and I'm the Chief Information Officer here at the University of Central Asia. We are delighted to be co-hosting today along with our friends at the National Information Society Agency of Korea, State Committee for Information Technology and Communications, Kyrgyz Republic, the International Academy of CIO, the World Bank, and UNDP. Thank you all those involved in making today happen. We are really pleased to have such a strong network of partners that are all working to the benefit of the people of Central Asia. The program is designed to support the Kyrgyz Republic to better understand, identify, monitor, and respond effectively to cyber threats. We also hope to learn from today how to develop regional leadership capacity in digital resilience. On behalf of all the hosts, I hope you are all doing well in these unprecedented times. Without any further delay, let us begin with the opening remarks from all our partners. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Mr. Yoon Seo Ku, Vice President of National Information Society Agency of Korea. Uh, good morning and good afternoon uh, and good evening. Unmute. Please unmute yourself. Uh, can you hear? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, my name is Yun Seok Ko, and uh, uh, as introduced. I'm a vice president of National Information Society Agency in Korea, and uh, I'm in charge of global ICT cooperation department. And uh, I welcome all of you to this online workshop. Um, it has already passed a year since the outbreak of COVID-19. As we all know, or some of us unfortunately already experienced, COVID-19 pandemic changed everybody's daily life all over the world. Um, nowadays, we have to wear uh, masks wherever we go. We have to keep social distance with people all the time. If we look at the global economy, some, uh, so many businesses are shut down already, especially self-employed businesses suffer greatly. Um, therefore, so many workers lost their jobs they have no choice but relying on government subsidy. Uh, but in this week, we heard some good news. Vaccines for COVID-19 are developed and some countries approved and already started vaccinated. Um, I think and I really hope this COVID-19 pandemic will be over very soon. Um, however, we have to be uh, prepared for another COVID-19 like pandemic. We don't know when and where it will strike next in the future. Um, therefore, it is very important for us to be united and respond jointly against any kind of pandemic. In today's workshop, we share what and how the Korean government did against this COVID-19 pandemic. I really hope it will help uh, you have new or better ideas when you have to fight against any kind of pandemic situation. And if I go, I would like to uh, give special thanks to everybody who works very hard and contribute their all efforts uh, for this event happening. And I really thank you very much and thank you very much all. And I really hope stay healthy always. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ku. I now invite Professor Dr. Offred, President of International Academy of CIO to say a few words. Thank you, Shokat. And, and thank you everyone for, for joining tonight. 
uh, we greatly appreciate being part of the program and helping to, in a small way, organize and, and greatly appreciate the, the, the partnership with University of Central Asia, World Bank, UNDP, the National Information Society Agency of, of Korea, as well as the State Committee of ICT of Kyrgyzstan. Um, just a brief note about International Academy of CIO. We were founded in 2005, uh, have about 50 country chapters now, and have a, a focus on ICT education and the development of ICT institutions. We publish annual digital government rankings. We have an accreditation program for master's degrees, as well as an annual conference and are active in um, current research in ICT, for example, in the age, areas of aging society and applying ICT to national disasters. One note on today's program that I think is, is, is quite relevant is, is Korea's efforts and other countries' efforts uh, many, many years in advance of the, of the pandemic to build digital resiliency and to foster digital government. And I think that's one thing we'll see is how Korea has a, a applied and be able to utilize what they've done over the years, as well as apply the lessons from previous um, epidemics and pandemics to this current situation. So thank you all for joining and, and, and thank you all for your partnership. Uh, thank you, Professor Dr. Offred. Now let me metaphorically pass the mic to Mr. Naveed Hassan Nakwi, World Bank Country Manager for the Kyrgyz Republic for his welcome remarks. Uh, Mr. Naveed, just unmute uh, your uh, speaker and then you can you can start your welcome remarks. Great. Um, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure on behalf of the World Bank to welcome you here uh, at an online workshop to discuss the Korean experience of digital response to COVID-19 and how to apply it in the Kyrgyz Republic. As this is a very important topic, earlier this year, the World Bank hosted a number of webinars on leveraging the power of digital technologies to tackle COVID-19. I'd like to thank the National Information Society Agency of Korea, the Korea World Bank Partnership Facility for making this virtual event possible. I'd also like to thank our partners, the State Committee of IT and Communications, the University of Central Asia, International Academy of Chief Information Officers and the United Nations Development Program for their support. I'd like to welcome distinguished uh, international and Korean experts to this event. Korea is widely regarded as a global leader in digital resilience and cybersecurity and an evolving success story in terms of its effective digital response to COVID-19. With so many promising vaccines on the horizon, Government leaders and all of us need to prepare for post-COVID recovery. So it is great to see that in today's discussion, Korean partners will address important topics uh, uh, related to the preparedness for the post-COVID-19 era. I'm certain that the smart city educational transformation and smart work concepts are highly relevant for the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, today's workshop, is part of a capacity building series under the Digital Resilience Program, which aims to strengthen the Kyrgyz Republic's government capacity to respond effectively to cyber threats, manage, manage digital risks, and develop a regional leadership in digital resilience, including cybersecurity, business continuity, and personal data protection. The World Bank supports digital transformation processes in Central Asia and the Kyrgyz Republic through the implementation of the regional digital CASA program. Other participants in this program are Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan. The digital CASA regional program aims to expand access to, to more affordable internet, attract private investment, and increase the ability of participating governments to provide digital government services in Central Asia. Earlier this year, the Digital Resilience Technical Assistance Program was initiated and with support from the Korea World Bank Partnership Facility to strengthen implementation and cyber resilience of digital CASA. 
COVID-19 is dramatically accelerating digital transformation across the world. Recent data uh, shows that in we the, the, the world has jumped forward five years in terms of digital disruption in the space of eight weeks uh, in the initial post-COVID era. It's becoming increasingly clear that countries that invested in a national broadband infrastructure and whose citizen businesses are connected through digital platforms are advancing and responding to this crisis much better than others. COVID-19 pandemic has raised concerns about the ability to provide services without disruption while ensuring cybersecurity and data privacy. These concerns uh, for both private and public entities uh, have been highlighted across the world. Digital leaders such as South Korea have proven that it is possible to contain COVID, secure economic prosperity through a combination of informed leadership, trust, integrity, and investment into resilience. There is a pathway out of this global crisis and uh, the digital transformation is part of the answer. Central Asian countries need to adequately address the fast growing digital threats and risks. In the Kyrgyz Republic during the COVID-19 pandemic, both public and private sector organizations are facing issues in ensuring continuity, privacy and security of services. To overcome these issues, we need a strong political will and a multi-stakeholder partnership, including government, business, academia and civil society, as well as uh, all development partners. In this regard, I would like to note the importance of our emerging partnership with the Koreans and uh, uh, other important organizations represented here on the digital resilience agenda and within the digital CASA project. To conclude, COVID uh, is a wake up call for all of us. The message is clear, safeguarding digital opportunities and helping countries achieve sustainable development goals requires investments in digital resilience. This will take international collaboration and innovative public part, uh, private partnerships. We in the World Bank stand ready as partners to all governments and societies to help achieve these goals. Uh, we have a very impressive lineup of speakers and I personally look forward to attending the whole event and learning from all of you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Naveed. Uh, Mr. Altenbeck Ismailov, Chairman of the State Committee for Information Technology and Communications, will now say a few words. Thank you, Shaukat, uh, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank for this wonderful uh, event, uh, the World Bank, Korea World Bank Partnership Facility, uh, UNDP, University of Central Asia, and in particular, Nation, National Information Society Agency of Korea and International Academy of uh, CEO uh, for hosting this uh, important uh, event that would essentially help Kyrgyz uh, Republic to navigate in the digital world uh, on how to build digital resilience here uh, in Kyrgyzstan. We have talked a lot about COVID and how digital resilience is uh, important during the pandemic, but as we are seeing a way out through vaccines that already have been uh, mentioned, one thing is uh, clear for sure. We need to build uh, digital resilience for the country so that this type of shocks like pandemics or others would not let us out from our usual business processes, from the government's work and the services we provide to our citizens. I think challenges were uh, a lot. Uh, government and businesses had to face their own challenges in terms of building their continuity and, and building their uh, resilience. But one thing is for sure, COVID has struck down everyone in the world. In order to overcome these challenges, one thing that we could do is just to host this type of events and talk about our successes and failures and what we could do together in order to overcome the challenges that we are facing. Um, that we are facing. We, we know from Korea, and this is very important uh, that we are having uh, this event in partnership with, uh, with the Korea, is that Korea has excellent uh, 
uh, track uh, of uh, controlling uh, the uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, we know that, uh, uh, that with all of the design, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, integration of technology, some rules and some uh, cooperation between government, businesses and citizens, overall the system uh, worked well in order to stop the uh, increase of the number of uh, COVID cases, but also it ensured uh, continuity of, uh, of operations of different uh, sites. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity for the Kyrgyz Republic, for the, everyone who is in this uh, seminar to learn more uh, about Korean experience. I really look forward to work with Korean partners even more uh, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, the, the seminar will have a very good uh, effect uh, on the future of technology here in Kyrgyzstan. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ismailov. Uh, I now invite Professor Dr. Sayed Suhail Hussain Nakwi, Director of the University of Central Asia, to aid his welcome. Thank you, Shokat. Uh, dear colleagues, it's a real uh, pleasure to have this opportunity to uh, welcome all of you uh, to this excellent uh, seminar, and especially uh, colleagues from the uh, World Bank, um, UNDP, um, and the uh, International Association of uh, CIOs, and then most uh, uh, definitely our Korean um, colleagues who are taking uh, this time to share their experiences um, uh, with us. Of course, here in uh, Kyrgyzstan, we have our partners, the State Committee on IT, uh, but now upgraded uh, to the ministerial uh, level uh, partnership uh, in IT. As I was uh, thinking about my remarks, I was uh, uh, and, and had formulated uh, them, I thought it may be uh, best uh, to think uh, that instead of a human, a bot is speaking, because I want to take uh, the, the human aspect and put it to the side a little bit and look at the uh, software and IT uh, aspect of that. You think of that from a, a software uh, testing point of view, this, this uh, COVID uh, pandemic has been uh, uh, perhaps one of the greatest opportunity to do a stress test on, uh, uh, on your systems uh, for everything. And uh, it is particularly relevant uh, for the University of Central Asia because we are a university uh, located in four countries and located um, in far uh, flung uh, areas. We have uh, operations in uh, Northern Afghanistan. We have operations um, in the smaller cities of Kazakhstan, but in the mountain communities of uh, Kyrgyz Republic and uh, Tajikistan. So uh, in any case, uh, for us, uh, digital uh, resilience is a reality uh, experienced on a daily uh, basis, not only from a business process uh, point of view, but also from uh, an educational perspective. And hence our particular uh, interest in, in uh, learning as much as possible about uh, this and uh, uh, serving as a resource and to work in partnership with the government of Kyrgyzstan, um, especially and also the other respective governments of Central Asia, uh, to serve as a, a repository of information and to play the role that a university is uh, supposed uh, to be playing. We look at uh, the past um, events and, and think about the possibility that how do you uh, convert this uh, catastrophe into an opportunity. Um, certainly, uh, the toll has been uh, high, but uh, the uh, contraction of time in terms of IT uh, adoption and the possibility that you can actually use these events as an accelerator to get out uh, in, in a hurry ahead uh, uh, of uh, uh, the, the world uh, in terms of your response, whether it is uh, uh, conversion to digital uh, payments, uh, attention to cyber uh, security, or the fact that you can get all of these uh, services out and question the very basics of many th of the ways when, uh, of, of doing things. I mean, why are we doing things in a particular 
way and uh, what is it that we can actually uh, accomplish through the use of te digital technologies. Um, so, as I said, uh, keeping the, the, the human uh, tragedy aspect um, to, uh, to a side from a technical perspective, uh, there is a phenomenal opportunity to accelerate uh, out and uh, especially for countries uh, like uh, Kyrgyzstan with its uh, uh, huge uh, youth uh, bulge available, an enormous resource uh, that uh, can power the country uh, forward. So uh, it is uh, excellent to have this uh, pool of expertise available to, to call on, to assist. And uh, we assure you that the University of Central Asia will be there uh, to serve uh, to, uh, as a repository, as an experimenter, um, and as a partner in this excellent initiative. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nakri. Uh, I now invite uh, Louise Chamberlain, UNDP uh, resident representative to the Kyrgyz Republic. And as today is her birthday, so happy birthday, Louise. May this day bring a lot of happiness, peace, and success in your life. Uh, please, please say a few words. Thank you, Shaukat. That's a surprise. You're well informed. <laughs> and um, I think this is uh, this seminar is going to be a very good birthday present. Uh, uh, Mr. Ismailov, Mr. Nakvi, uh, distinguished professors and experts, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of UNDP, United Nations Development Program, I'm really glad to join this event to learn about Korea's digital approach to combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and I think as has already been uh, uh, mentioned, the Republic of Korea is of course a long recognized leader in empowering millions of its citizens uh, into a digital future. And, and this famous pandemic posed a lot of disruptions to people's lives, but it also opened a lot of new opportunities. And I think that's what uh, Professor Nakvi was just uh, explaining. We need to look at uh, how can we use them and what, what can be accomplished digitally. So this investment in a digital transformation that has to chart the way forward in my view for acceleration beyond uh, recovery. From UNDP's point of view, we aim to embrace existing and emerging dig digital technology in all aspects of our work to better serve our partners in their efforts, which are the member states, to achieve the sustainable development goals. Through this process of scanning, testing, and scaling relevant technologies, we are able to use digital channels to address new and complex demand in development. And these, uh, the complexity is ever growing, as we know. And, and also to pursue experience-led innovation in collaboration with governments, civil society, and, and private sector. So this is intended to help our partners become increasingly agile and effective in eradicating poverty and accelerating structural transformation. Let me take this opportunity to mention how much we value uh, the partnership that we enjoy uh, with the State Committee of, of, of ICT, uh, the World Bank and UN, UCA and, and other partners in, in this initiative of digital resilience. And, and so in shaping recovery from socioeconomic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, UNDP is helping governments uh, across the globe to uh, strengthen interaction with citizens. There's two-way communication, if you will. And digital skills is a really important element in helping citizens uh, gain access to improved services. Entrepreneurs will need skills to make use of digital payment platforms and e-commerce systems to improve the potential of their businesses. Enhanced digital financing platforms can improve the vital flow of remittances into development and, and, and many other similar solutions. Today is not only my birthday, it's also the International Human Rights Day, uh, which globally marks the end of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, which is why I'm wearing this little uh, orange uh, thing. And in the first quarter of this year, cases of domestic gender-based violence in, in the Kyrgyz Republic increased by 65% compared to previous years. To stem this trajectory, uh, UNDP together with UNICEF conducted an online hackathon in May this year in Kyrgyzstan. So we brought together programmers and designers and representatives of crisis centers to look at solutions to mitigate the effects of violence in quarantine. Within 48 hours, we had 53 developers who came up with 18 IT products that help children and women who are in a difficult life situation. 
And these winning solutions we supported financially for prototyping and experimentation. And these solutions are now out there uh, helping people. So this event mobilized the best intellectual and innovative resources to tackle the issues that related to isolation and violence. And it was an interesting example of how digital platforms can be used to support civic activism. It helped the IT community to engage in this response and it triggered a change in the mindset of many participants to think ahead beyond recovery. And, and recently in Uzbekistan, uh, we supported the government to conduct a corruption risk assessment in the health sector to mitigate integrity risks uh, during the, the crisis. In many uh, countries of the region, we are developing similar platforms to strengthen transparency and access to information for people. And, and a few weeks ago, the UN system organizations recently, I mean, we, we issued a joint statement on data protection and privacy in support of more uh, privacy protective use of data and technology. Um, the UN's efforts in digital transformation are very much anchored to the values of the Charter of the United Nations and on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, which is an uh, ever young 72-year-old uh, today. It's vital that we integrate new technologies into the SDGs, into the ways of coming up with solutions to achieve SDGs with equality and equity as the guiding principles. So in conclusion, I, I also want to reaffirm the continuing support of UNDP uh, in Kyrgyzstan to the digital resilience agenda and the response uh, to the socioeconomic impacts of COVID-19 in particular, and looking forward very much to learn today from the Korean experience and, and for all of us as partners to gain a better understanding of uh, solutions can, that can effectively be taken to scale. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Chamberlain. And once again, let me express our gratitude to all of our partners. Let us now move on the first session of the day, Korea's response to COVID-19. This session will introduce Korea's approach and best practices in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. It will highlight Korean policymakers based on public-private partnership and present examples of digital resilience using the example of government services. Discussing these topics, we will have Professor Hoon Seng Lee from Yonsei University, followed by He Jung Lim from NIA, and then Dr. Sang Hoon Lee, Managing Director of KAIA. We will then have some time for your questions before we break. Professor Hoon Seng Lee. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your kind introductions. Uh, uh, in my uh, presentation, I will try to go over the overall response, uh, not just digital response, but uh, overall response, including uh, the digital response as we're uh, responding to the COVID-19 situation in Korea. So uh, the COVID-19 had been uh, 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 truly a pandemic uh, that had gone around uh, the globe uh, full circle. Uh, and it is even uh, now uh, coming back to Korea in the way, uh, form of a third wave as well. So uh, this is uh, truly a global pandemic. And uh, compared to the uh, initial phase, uh, uh, right now we are experiencing the situation uh, not just in uh, Asia, but uh, in America and Europe and uh, in uh, other continents as well. Uh, as for Korea, uh, uh, Korea had been uh, doing quite well. Uh, initially, there had been first wave uh, around uh, February and early March, uh, uh, which had been uh, uh, reduced. And then uh, there had been a second wave uh, in uh, August uh, that we had experienced. Uh, lately, uh, we are in the phase that we are experiencing third wave, but uh, we will have to see uh, how we, uh, things will uh, go on. But overall, uh, we uh, have uh, a quite a good records uh, of uh, about uh, 30,000 uh, confirmed cases and around uh, 500 uh, cases uh, of the mortality. Uh, one of the uh, hallmark of the Korean response uh, will be uh, the best uh, response of the Korean government. Uh, we have four different level of the uh, 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 emergency uh, level uh, to respond to the, uh, uh, the pan, uh, com, uh, infectious disease uh, situations. Uh, you can see that uh, right after uh, Korea was informed about the situation in China 
in January 3, uh, January 3rd, uh, they uh, raised the level to level one. Uh, uh, by end of the January, uh, they raised the level to level two. And then uh, the, the level was raised by February and uh, by March, uh, they were in full force uh, in uh, level four. So uh, it, the, the decision was very quick and very uh, uh, swift. And uh, overall, uh, the, uh, the Korean uh, response can be uh, uh, described in five phases. Uh, so responding to the cases uh, with the best, best and accurate epidemiology investigations and early detections uh, with the expansion of diagnostic testings and uh, uh, large uh, scale uh, screening and also uh, treatment of the COVID-19 cases uh, with the patient collapse patients and uh, bed allocation, uh, allo uh, allocations. And uh, so these uh, three parts uh, are uh, uh, usually explained as uh, 3T, uh, testing, uh, uh, tracing, testing, and uh, treatment. And then there was uh, the aspect of quarantine at the point of entry uh, and also treatment of non-COVID-19 patients as well. In terms of overall governance, uh, the, uh, at the level of uh, level four uh, crisis uh, alert level, uh, the, the hallmark of the Korean response was the whole of government approaches. So uh, it was uh, at the highest level, it was headed by the prime ministers, uh, which also with the Ministry of Health and Welfare and with the Ministry of Interior and Safety. So with the Ministry of Health and Welfare and Korea CDC responding to the uh, disease situations, uh, with the Ministry, uh, with, with the Prime Minister as a head, uh, with the uh, Ministry of Interior and Safety as uh, leading the pan-government countermeasure uh, support. Uh, so it enabled all of other ministries also to uh, take a part. Uh, so it, it was truly, uh, in, it is currently is a, quite of a whole of government uh, approaches. Uh, include also, it includes the very close communication with the local government as well. So uh, with this level, uh, there had been a first case of the uh, situations uh, in January 19th, and it quickly escalated. Uh, and by uh, Jan uh, February 18th, there was the first case with the uh, Shincheonji religious clusters. And then uh, we could see uh, there had been uh, the true first wave, which le raised level crisis alert level to the red, which is level four. Uh, at this time, uh, actually, one of the uh, things that we can notice is the ex uh, rapid extension of the uh, testing uh, throughout the country. And also uh, uh, there had been some of the uh, response but with the uh, living and treatment, uh, living treatment centers, uh, which enable the fast uh, uh, treatment capacity uh, uh, expansions. And there was a, a from the uh, government, especially at the uh, Korea CDC, Korea CDC was operating the emergency operating centers, which was uh, the headquarter of overseeing all of the situation in Korea about the infectious disease situations. And uh, one, uh, it was actually uh, very important to uh, expand the uh, testing cases uh, from the very beginning. So uh, the, the efforts began uh, uh, very early in January. Uh, and then later, uh, Korea was able to achieve the maximum daily capacity of testing, averaging uh, 15,000 to maximum uh, 20,000 capacity with a turnaround time of 16 to uh, 14, uh, 24 hours, uh, with a testing institution of about uh, 118 uh, place uh, laboratories uh, for testing, which enabled uh, fasting, very fast confirmation of the uh, testing uh, cases. And uh, this testing was uh, possible because there had been a process of the emergency use authorizations, uh, which enabled the, uh, the testing uh, kit uh, commercialization uh, very fastly, uh, so that uh, about four uh, commercial testing kits was in the market by uh, uh, by uh, end of January, uh, early February, uh, which enabled uh, about hundred uh, of the uh, private laboratory and uh, university, a uh, private university hospital, to be able to purchase those kits and uh, enable the very widespread uh, uh, presence of the uh, testing service as well. And this was enhanced by the uh, drive-through approaches, uh, which enabled the much faster uh, uh, collection of the samples uh, and uh, in, which enabled a uh, much safe, uh, safer uh, uh, testing as well. 
but this was actually enabled by some of the uh, use of the uh, ICT technologies with uh, uh, there had been uh, a service for finding the nearby screening centers, so uh, people were able to quickly find where they can be uh, 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 sampled and tested. And also, uh, the government also shared the uh, list of the national security hospital where they are, uh, they can be uh, 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 tested and uh, treated uh, for the COVID nineteen uh, these situations. Uh, and also, uh, the uh, one, uh, Korean government actually was very serious about uh, using of the mask in the public. And uh, the, the, there had been a public, publicly distributed face mask uh, information service uh, uh, provided uh, uh, on the internet. And also, uh, with the contact tracing strategy, it was very uh, a traditional strategy of the investigation risk assessment and contact classification and contact management. But one of the hallmark was use of the uh, information uh, with the location information from the uh, mobile phone location information and credit card uh, transition, uh, transaction role and the use of the uh, CCTV information as well, which enabled faster uh, contact tracing. Uh, and then later, the information was shared uh, uh, to the general public uh, through the uh, text messaging. And also there had been uh, some of the private efforts to uh, develop a map of locating uh, where the uh, uh, outbreak is, uh, 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 occurrence of the confirmed case is happening uh, quite in the uh, real time. Later, uh, uh, the Korean government uh, developed the COVID-19 epidemiological investigation supporting system, which is called EISS, uh, which actually enabled a much faster uh, 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 locate, uh, uh, process of locating the uh, confirmed cases, um, especially the movement information as well. Uh, later with the data visualization uh, process of the geog geographic movement uh, information. Uh, so before actually uh, the process was uh, even quite uh, fast, uh, uh, which took about 24 hours uh, to track the movement of the uh, page uh, confirmed case. But with the introduction of this uh, information system, which was based on the uh, previously developed uh, smart city platform, it enabled uh, the whole, whole process uh, from the 24 hours to be 10 minutes. Uh, it was also uh, uh, possible to uh, track the uh, incoming travelers' cases. Uh, uh, since MERS outbreak, there was a smart quarantine information system uh, uh, which tracked the travelers with uh, uh, roaming uh, data information. So uh, whenever the pay, uh, any uh, travelers coming into Korea is uh, using the Korean uh, telecom service, uh, uh, the uh, information was shared uh, to the Korea CDC and then to national insurance body. So at the hospital, uh, 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 physicians were able to uh, identify patients who are from any of the outbreak uh, striking countries. And there had been uh, uh, extent, uh, quite extensive quarantine and special immigration, uh, immigration uh, procedure flow uh, that had been enhanced as well, uh, especially with the use of the self health check mobile app as well at, uh, at the entry of the Korea. And uh, there had been also a uh, uh, testing service at the airport as well. And uh, this is the quarantine observation facility, which was actually uh, provided uh, in the airport uh, facilities, near the airport facilities. Uh, after uh, the uh, people uh, coming to Korea also, there uh, also uh, with the close contact cases, uh, people are, are to be quarantined for 14 days. Uh, then there was the use of the app uh, for monitoring those uh, quarantined patients. Uh, and also for the quarantined patients, uh, there had been use of the, uh, the, there had been cases of use of AI uh, to make a, a AI based uh, a phone call uh, to check uh, everyday status of the uh, compound patients. Another aspect is also uh, the government was actually very swift in uh, providing uh, guidelines for uh, treatments and uh, management of the confirmed cases as well. And this was actually an example of the uh, living uh, treatment center, uh, which was a non-hospital uh, facility to uh, uh, secure the uh, confirmed patients who, who were uh, less severe. And uh, overall, uh, there had been very strong uh, social distancing campaign, which was followed by the Korean citizens uh, quite well. Uh, 
uh, especially uh, there had been mandatory mask wearing policy, uh, which was actually uh, the, all over the many of the Korean uh, citizens were actually uh, uh, abiding by it uh, very uh, uh, strictly. And uh, begin, in the beginning, there was a three level of the uh, social distancing, and then later it was uh, divided into the all over five level um, uh, with, with the 1.5 and 2.5 level uh, aided. Uh, currently, we are in the uh, 2.5 level uh, in the Seoul city. Uh, and in the school, there had been various measures to for the uh, online uh, education and uh, social distancing uh, in the school. And uh, currently, uh, many of the facilities are using the QR-based uh, check-in uh, uh, for uh, to enhance content tracing uh, just in case. And overall, uh, Korea was identified as a country which are using the or one of the uh, most uh, many most of the uh, different types of content tracing tool. Many of the countries are using either two types of the content tracing tool or three types. But uh, 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 what Korea was actually uh, the only country which uh, are currently used, which is currently using four different type of content tracing measure. Uh, but uh, with this, actually, uh, many of the uh, private information actually are revealed from the multiple different sources. Uh, and uh, and this actually also enable uh, faster contact tracing, but also uh, also raises some of the issues as well. But overall, uh, Korea was able to respond with the minimum restrictions, uh, with the pub strong public participations, and uh, the with the universal health coverage system in place, and uh, very good cooperate. We do very good cooperation uh, in the central and local government. And use of uh, there had been use of the innovative and creative measures utilizing cutting edge technologies as well. And uh, ten of the practices had been uh, showcased as uh, ten best practice uh, for uh, uh, various disease control measure. And uh, with this, Korea had been uh, in the situation where there had been quite uh, 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 suppressed uh, confirmed case situations uh, with a very low case fatality rate. Uh, overall, Korea's uh, experience was uh, uh, really possible with the testing, tracing, and isolate and treat uh, approaches uh, with the uh, help of the national insurance. And uh, social uh, distancing and mask policy was very effective. And uh, uh, the hallmark of one of the hallmarks is use of the innovative solution and very strong uh, use, widespread use of the ICT. But overall, I think the Korean government was able to succeed succeed in the situation uh, with the timely policy decisions and rapid and bold execution of any of the decided policy. And again, uh, uh, Korea learned actually extensively from the 2000 MERS outbreak and many of the changes that happened since MERS outbreak was very helpful, especially with the reorganization of Korea CDC with the emergency operation center establishments and also with the expanding the response capacity of the EIS officer and uh, their capacity. But uh, one very important aspect is the legal and administrative measure in place uh, with the emergency use authorization, which enabled the very fast uh, commercially, uh, commercial kit availability for the testing kits, but also with the change in the Infectious Disease Control and Prevention Act and the Personal Information Pro Protection Act changes that happened in 2000, since 2015 MERS outbreak actually enabled uh, use of the uh, mobile uh, uh, technologies and uh, use of the data uh, for the contact tracing. But the, this uh, uh, comes with the, some of the issue of the data privacy. So I think the uh, issue is how we can uh, uh, balance uh, between the individual data privacy right and the overall public safety. So I think it is uh, not a, 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 a easy solution, but it, it will be a quite of a balancing act between these two values. Uh, currently, Korea is uh, entering the third wave. Uh, so uh, there, uh, uh, just as many of the countries, and uh, there are uh, many of the vaccines that are uh, uh, both developed in Korea and also uh, being considered in Korea to import. So uh, we will see how the Korean situation will fare uh, on uh, with the uh, uh, continuing situation of the COVID-19 uh, in Korea. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, now uh, uh, Ho Jung Lim from uh, KIA. NIA, sorry. 
Okay, hi, good afternoon. Um, this is Ha Jung Lim. It's a great um, pleasure meeting you all. So today, um, I'd like to share in particular how Korean government has responded to COVID-19 by releasing and utilizing of open data. So here are my contents of the presentation of today. So before we jump into the COVID-19 open data part, um, let us briefly look at the clear definition of open data and the data governance framework of Korea as well. So open data is data created and retained by the government, municipal organization, and public organization available to the public. So, and obviously open data should be machine readable. So if it's in PDF file or Word or PPT file, it's not an open data. And there are four distinctive bodies in open data governance framework of Korea. Open Data Strategy Council, um, which is a deliberating body under the Prime Minister and co-chaired by the private representative, and the Ministry of the Interior and Safety, the leading ministry on the National Open Data Plan, and NIA. And there is also an Open Data Mediation Committee as well. And now uh, let us have a look on Korean National Data Portal. So you, this, uh, you see this small, um, computer screen on the bottom left. So this is our national data portal. And I'm sure the English version of this portal should be already by the end of the year. So you may check um, out later. So government of Korea has released um, key data sets related to COVID-19 as an issue data to our national data portal. So by categorizing them into four area, overall studies, mass data, and public welfare support data and daily life data. So in the overall studies, um, since the early stage outbreak of COVID-19, we have been releasing important data such as studies of COVID-19 by location, age, and sex, and the list of screening centers and national secret hospitals that um, Dr. Lee has already mentioned in his slide. And for the mass data, um, I'll be discussing in details in the next slide. And daily life data include e-learning materials, and publicly open courses of university and lifelong education courses and safety information of countries as well. So it is very important um, for the government to provide information as data, open data to be exact, and then private sector use and utilize the data to develop useful services for citizens quickly. Um, now I'll be discussing the process for releasing sales of mass data in chronological order. And I think I should be giving a little explanation on the background of this mask issue. So there was growing concerns over face mask shortage in this March and the Korean government adopted diverse measures to secure mass supplies for the citizens, like five day rotation face mask distribution system as one of them. So under this system, um, purchases are limited to two masks per person each week and available only through public retail platforms and on designated days of the week, depending on the birth year. And the five days uh, rotation face mask distribution system rolled out on March 9, allowed people to buy a face mask through the public retail platforms, such as government designated pharmacies and post offices and mass stores. And we no longer operate the system since we entered like quite um, stable phase in securing the supply of masks. And now um, let us get back to the mask data. Um, the very first idea of releasing open data related to COVID-19, including the mask data, was proposed in Kwanghaman on the First Avenue that you're watching right now. Uh, so this is an online platform where members of the public can offer up ideas concerning politics or new policies that the, they hope the government will consider. And the government immediately responded to the idea proposed by the civic hackers and public private task force was established right next day. So there was a um, series of online and offline meetings with public and private sector and we have eventually reached a solution releasing the mass sales data. Um, the system mechanism and detailed process for leading sales of masks. So I'm um, here. Health Insurance Review and Assessment Service, known as HIRA, where it deals with the national health insurance system in Korea, relays mask um, sales data, which contains code of mask sellers and quantity of warehousing, and number of mask sales to NIA. 
Then we repackage this data with the adding inventory segmentation with displaying mask availability using four different colors, and then provide it as an open um, API format via Neighbor Cloud, which is the largest search engine in Korea. And Neighbor Cloud business such as KT and Coscom and HM provide data API server and development environment uh, for programming for stable service to run. And this is to solve um, traffic problems that might have caused due to the public's great attention. And this is um, so successful um, public private partnership case where all stakeholders have participated from the very beginning of the stage and thus were able to fully leverage the capacity and professional solutions that private sector has. And um, at this during this moment, about 150 apps and web services were developed. So um, you see this um, cell phone, and this is an actual example of the mask map service developed by the private sector. It is shown as color green, yellow, red, and gray, depending on the sales quantity and circumstances of sales place. So since the launch of the mask map service, like issues like upsurge in pri um, prices in masks and loan queues for purchase had gradually stabilized and reducing civil compliance from um, both citizens and the sellers as well. And this is another example of um, ICD services developed by the private sector. So um, this is an example of self-diagnosis applications. Um, it's where like users put their information and symptoms and medical history. Then the app provides patients severity and tells if or she has to be screened or not. Um, and this is the screening centers um, that um, Professor Lee uh, has already mentioned. So I'll just skip it. And um, also this is an example of citizens voluntary use of open data. And this movement pass app, this is a service um, that enables users to check the movement path of the confirmed and displaying the information on the web. Then um, what aspect of Korea made all this possible, enabling us to provide right government data in right time? So first, we have been supporting stable IT infrastructure, prepared for release and share of open data. Through data portals, um, we release open data in the format of API to enable immediate and convenient use. And in addition, in operation and operation of consulting body that we call named PASTA was very helpful as well. Um, it's a consultative body of local club business in Korea. Um, and then we also have collaborating process with the government as well. So also central government and ministries have human resources and department for the open data task. And we have a very organized community of them as well. So online and offline community of government official who is in charge of open data was very highly effective way of communicating and collaborating in this unexpected crisis. And last but definitely not the least, um, we are collaborating with the citizens and business as well. Since 2017, we have been operating Open Data Forum, which is a communication platform with the citizens. And we have been also implementing joint project for supporting business where we support for people who want to start their data business. And that would be all for my um, presentation today. And I believe we have an additional Q&A session followed by the next presentation. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me later on. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Hei Jong Lim. Uh, just to, just to remind you, there is a Q and A section in the in the Zoom, and uh, there are some questions. So the, the respective speakers, if you would like to answer there, that's also fine. And for all the participants, uh, you are welcome to post your questions there so that we can direct them to the respective uh, um, speakers. And now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sang Hon Lee, Managing Director of KIA. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hello. Uh, according to the program, I am uh, supposed to start my presentation at 13.35, but it's already passed. So I try to be uh, as brief as possible. And my name is Sang Lee, Managing Director of 
Korea, Korea Agency for Infrastructure Technology Advancement. And Korean's government's digital system includes a number of measures, out of which I would like to focus on the uh, uh, COVID-19 contact tracing system. Okay. And this is uh, the content of my presentation. Anyhow, I'll be providing a short background of the development of CTS and main concept of smart city and operating structure of the system. The COVID-19 CTS contact tra tracing system conducts an epistemological investigation which is essential activities need to be done to prevent the spread of infectious disease like COVID-19, according to the Act on the Prevention of Infectious Disease in Korea. The system enabled the automation of the investigation process through real-time analysis of a confirmed patient's location information and credit card transaction history. As a result, the system shortens the investigation time from more than 24 hours to less than 10 minutes. The system is also called COVID-19 smart management system in Korea. Due to the limited pre uh, presentation time, the, the introduction video from the, oh, okay, I, I, I skip. Uh, the system is developed from National Smart City R&D program, which is uh, managed by Kaya. As many patients of COVID-19 confirmed in Daegu, which is also the, the test bed of smart city R&D program, the work burden of epistemological investigators were excluded. And the necessity of early use of the smart city data hub that can quickly and accurately analyze huge amount of data was raised. In response, we discussed on the use of the data hub on February 24th with the researchers and the government, the Ministry of Land Infrastructure and Transport, and began to develop the system. The development of system was finished on March 16th, and after the pilot operation for 10 days, the system officially started to be operated on March 26 by Korean Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, KCDC. When we, going back, when we are going back to the first, the amendment of the Act on the Prevention of Infectious Disease after Mars in 2015 was enabled the, the use of the information from confirmed cases. Kaya is managing national smart city R&D program and its main target is to develop standardized open data hub architecture, which will be the common basis to apply transparent and shared administrative services and facilitate digital economy. The program is planned from uh, 2018 to 2022. It is supported by Minister of Science and ICT and managed by the Minister of Land, Infrastructure and Transport. Also more than 120 researching organizations are participating in the program. This program includes the creation of smart city in terms of test bed in Tegu and Shihun. As mentioned before, in late February, COVID-19 confirmed patients of Daegu were sharply increased due to a crowded religious gathering, Shincheonji. Uh, the, the National Smart City R&D program has been conceptually designed based upon a three-layered framework of smart cities structured with physical infrastructure, cyber system like a data hub, and social uh, service layer. Data integration and interoperability will be critical to make this frame work uh, interactively between physical structure and cyber system to come up with social services and solutions for the benefit of cities. Data Hub will play a leading role in implementing a data-driven smart city model, connecting data from various fields of city domains to be analyzed and processed for efficient city management and social services, and finally contributing to solve various urban problems and provide companies with business opportunities. Data Hub, the core smart city technology, can store, manage, and analyze the variety of different data sets coming from its silo, such as mobility, energy, environment, etc. It can supply the multiple solutions as open a a API uh, by using stored and analyzed data sets. The architecture model of Data Hub has been developed through the National R&D program, 
it will be standardized globally, I hope. We have uh, collaborated with the EU fiveware platforms since 1998, uh, 2019, and the prototype of this architecture will be customal, customized for Daegu and Xiong in uh, 2021. This is the operating structure of the system, CTS system. When a confirmed case is occurred, investigators of KCDC or local governments request related data to the system. The system requests the approval for the data use to the National Police Agency, NPA, and the Credit Finance Association, CREFIA. After the approval by two uh, entities, the request is notified to three uh, telecom companies and 22 credit card companies. And the companies send primitive details to epistemology uh, investigators of KCDC through the system. All this process, such as request, approval, data providing, analysis, and verification, is operated by the system. And the core of the system is smart city data, how this can collect, process, and analyze a, a huge amount of data. Uh, sorry. I have some more content to present. Investigation process is performed by the officers, those who verify, edit, and finalize details based on the interview with patients. Then epistemological network analysis is conducted. After analysis, the system manages epistemology investigation and the investigators verifies again the result of analysis based on their interview. How will this process such as request, approval data providing, analysis and verification is operated by the system and the core of the system is okay, I uh, told you already. There are lots of paperwork to get approval and data from various agencies and companies, the number of which is 28 in total. The system makes this process automatic and shorten investigation time dramatically. One important point is that all, not all officials uh, here can access, but only authorized epistemological investigators by KCDC have the right of access for the purpose of personal information protection. The advantages of the system is the accuracy, the agility, and the efficiency. In terms of efficiency, investigation time should turn from more than, as I told you, more than 20, year, 20 hours to 10 minutes. Actually, it takes about two to three minutes to analyze it by the system. Also, lots of people are with respect to 28 organizations and companies is changed to counterparise the record. Due to this efficient real-time system, Korea was able to counterwork the mass expansion of the confrontation. Uh, there are some more slides left uh, that I prepared, but uh, uh, those are, are largely uh, related to implication and, and in terms of smart city, etc. So I would uh, like to leave uh, those issues uh, for uh, second session's discussion. Okay, this is end of my uh, uh, presentation, and thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sang Hun Lee, and thank you to all the speakers, Professor Hun Sang Lee and uh, Hoi Jang Lin from uh, NIA. Uh, I think it's a very, very interesting uh, discussions and very, very uh, informative information we have received. Uh, we have a couple of uh, minutes for question answers, and uh, we, we do have some, some questions uh, on the QA box. So I will just uh, post them, and then uh, one of you can, can answer. Uh, one of the questions is, is testing free of charge, or how much does it cost per item? So... Uh, Okay, so maybe I can answer. Uh, so as long as uh, it is uh, you, uh, it is recommended by the doctor. Uh, it is uh, free of charge. But at the moment in the Seoul city, uh, 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 the the Seoul city is actually as long as you are giving the your mobile phone information, the uh, city of Seoul is trying to uh, 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 give the testing uh, for free. Uh, because there is uh, quite uh, a rapid increase in the case again. Uh, uh, so, but overall, what it means by free is actually the, uh, it will be covered by the national NC insurance. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, another question is, uh, WHO declares that best time to prevent the next pandemic is now. 
how countries, including Korea, are sharing and integrating different technologies with other countries, particularly with underdeveloped countries, to prevent widespread pandemic. Um, okay, I'll be in charge of <laughs> answer to your question, but I don't know if it is right or uh, wrong. Uh, uh, Korea is developing actually the K quarantine ICT solution integrating package with a CTS system. Uh, it means that a QR code registry system and self quarantine safety application will be integrated through the package with the CTS system. And this uh, advanced system can be easily applied uh, as it has been uh, uh, developed to collect location information. If the country has only, only mobile phone based stations, it's very important. You, your question is concerning time because the pandemic is in front of us. So, oh. <laughs> So uh, Korea is ready to help for the countries concerned uh, in terms of the you know, ICT based you know, responding system. Thank you. Uh, okay. Just to add uh, just one more comment. I, well, one of the things that maybe can be suggest, uh, I think is maybe overall data sharing uh, framework, uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, if not globally, maybe starting with the uh, countries in uh, Asia, uh, including Asia Pacific and Central Asia as well. Uh, so that uh, uh, if there can be some kind of a rules and regulation that enables uh, more efficient data sharing among uh, of many of the different uh, countries uh, while utilizing some of the latest uh, technologies, IT uh, platform. I think that kind of a, a, a pre, uh, uh, arranged framework uh, between uh, multiple uh, countries, uh, at least in the continental level. Maybe that, uh, that is uh, one of the uh, aspects that can enable the situation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can I request uh, our distinguished speakers to answer a couple of more questions in the QA section uh, live, because you can just uh, respond and then answer so that we can continue the other uh, session at the same time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, after an inspiring session, uh, one, uh, we will start the session two now. Uh, I am pleased now to invite four speakers to share with us their perspectives on preparedness for post-COVID-19. We will first hear from Dr. Jongsun Huang from NIA, who will talk to us about the development of smart city of NIA. Dr. Myonga Hung, also from NIA, will then talking to us about Korea's Digital New Deal, one of the three pillars of Korea's recently introduced post-COVID initiatives to build a resilient economy. We will then hear from uh, Sangyeon Jang from Korea Education and Research Information Services as he discusses education transformation. Transformation. Jong Kim from NIA will then share a view on smart work innovation post-COVID. Uh, following these speakers, we will break for questions before drawing the event to close. Uh, over to you, Dr. Jong, Jong, uh, Johnson Frank. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, yes, we can see you and we can hear okay. you. Okay, uh, great. So I will open my presentation, okay. Okay, uh, thank you for bringing me here and thank you for your interest in Korea. So, uh, so I now find we have many Korean experts and uh, especially experts from NIA, my agency. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, smart city and its contribution to resilience, uh, especially in uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis. So as you all know, uh, Korea uh, has showed uh, good performance in fighting against the COVID-19, uh, COVID um, even though uh, recently we have uh, the second surge, a third uh, surge of uh, cases. So one of the 
uh, one of the reasons behind the Korea School performance uh, was uh, our lessons from um, Mel's break in 2015. Uh, so uh, it was uh, the first hit uh, to Korea uh, by, uh, how to say, uh, a virus pandemic. So uh, at the in the first place, Korea was hit very severely, uh, seriously, but uh, soon we find uh, we get some lessons and we succeedly uh, stop the spread of uh, MERS. So in that experience, we realized the realized some uh, lessons, uh, including the value of open data and the, finally the value of balanced approach uh, between uh, personal personal privacy and the public interest. So before uh, MERS, uh, we, uh, most Koreans thought uh, personal uh, privacy uh, was the most important value, but uh, we realized that in some cases, uh, we need to allow to uh, use personal data to uh, prevent, uh, to prevent this, uh, the, so how to say, a virus uh, spread. Uh, another factor uh, that helped Korea uh, to cope with a, a, a pandemic successfully uh, is a smart city. Uh, in order to understand how smart city contribute to uh, help Korea to uh, fight against, uh, in fight against the COVID-19, we need to think about uh, the very uh, basic concept of smart city. So uh, in the tr in a trust, trust, tr traditional sense, a smart city was defined as a city with uh, many uh, advanced technology, including ICT and uh, data analytics. But uh, so, but uh, we need to we need new understanding uh, when we fight against uh, many crises, including uh, COVID nineteen. So, uh, this case shows a new uh, the show, the shows the value of new understanding of uh, smart city. So, there's a two type of uh, mobile phone. One is a feature phone. The other one is a smartphone. The biggest difference between uh, the, the, these two are openness versus closed system. So feature phone, feature phone uh, was a closed, closed system. So users cannot add or change it uh, to, smart, uh, to their mobile phone. But uh, the uh, smartphone's value is its openness. So uh, users can add and users can uh, use their smartphone for uh, many, uh, many different purposes. So uh, smart city uh, need to work like work like that uh, in order to uh, in order in order to uh, coping with in order to cope against uh, many crises. We don't know what kind of crisis we will face in the future. So uh, we didn't know we will have COVID pandemic crisis in uh, 2020. Huh? So we don't know. So in order, in order to make a city uh, quickly response to uh, crisis, uh, crisis, uh, crisis and uh, the, the crisis and uh, so many uh, difficult problems, uh, we need to uh, we need to separate. So city as a platform layer and uh, uh, so solution layer. So uh, if we don't have a platform layer, then uh, we need to develop each solution after uh, some crisis has come to us, then uh, it is too late. It will take a long time to develop a new system, a new system or new uh, tools from scratch. But if we have platform, common platform that can help us to uh, quickly develop uh, so our, our solution was our responses, then uh, we can very effectively fight against any crisis, including a uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, this is the concept uh, that, uh, that is called uh, smart city as a platform concept. So uh, this kind of concept help us Korea to very successfully fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, in, in the previous uh, presentation, Dr. Lee sang uh, very uh, explained about uh, data of a project in, a project in detail. So uh, the Co Korea government have developed a data platform uh, for uh, years. 
uh, and we we didn't know we we can we will use this data hope uh, as the basis for our uh, basis for tracking system against the COVID-19 uh, virus, uh, COVID-19 cases. But as Dr. Uh, Lee explained, uh, the search data platform helped us to develop a new tracking system very quickly. As, I, as far as I know, it, it took uh, less than two weeks to develop uh, this, co uh, this, uh, this tracking system. So we don't know how, what kind of crisis we will have in the future. So now, uh, if, a, if a city develop, uh, so how to say, good data platform and, and good sensor platform and good other platforms, then uh, it strengthens. Uh, cities' uh, capability to respond to any kind of crisis. So, uh, so this is another uh, another contribution uh, by so our the data platform. So, uh, COVID uh, so data platform that only help help not only government to develop apps, but it also contributed to uh, private companies to develop uh, good apps. So these uh, these these apps are about uh, these apps are provide uh, these apps are uh, providing uh, COVID nineteen patients movement information. But as you can see, uh, private app uh, so shows the shows better performance in terms of download and in terms of uh, evaluation. So. Uh, but so with this, with this, with this data platform, the, the government uh, developed a new uh, application itself. Also, government enabled uh, private industry to develop new tools to uh, for in fighting against the, the COVID nineteen. Also, uh, smart city help uh, many workers to uh, work at home. So, as you can see, not only big companies but uh, mid and the small size companies also uh, started uh, so smart smart working program. So it also help us to uh, make uh, our society intact. Also, online education help students to stay at home and uh, at the same time uh, main, uh, keep uh, their learning uh, at home. Uh, that is online education watch. So, uh, so finally, I'd like to give the future of smart city, future direction of smart city development. So I'm now uh, in charge of uh, designing new national pilot city in Busan. The uh, pilot city's uh, vision is to be a world first augmented city. Uh, augmented, augmented city means that uh, smart city augment strengths strengths and city each citizen's uh, physical capability and cognitive capability with emerging technologies like robot and AL VR. So with such technologies, augmented technology can help us to uh, but to prevent uh, spread, uh, prevent so new crisis, uh, cri uh, prevent new crisis spreading. So uh, I'd like to end with uh, four strategies uh, we have developed for our national pilot city. Uh, strategy one is to develop platform of platforms. So data sharing and resources resource sharing uh, strengthen uh, city, cities and citizens' ability to to, uh, to fight against any crisis. The second is to develop new data architecture, not only protect personal data, but also uh, we try to build a new system that can uh, help us to uh, represent each person's data in a ba balanced way. So we want to harmonize protection and the use of data uh, in on the new data architecture. So the one is to merge uh, cyber and the physical society. So digital twin is very, very famous for in this respect. Finally, uh, we want we want to uh, make the basis for robot friendly city. So if we 
can use robots, then we can uh, more effectively uh, deal with many crises, uh, including a COVID-19 pandemic. So, uh, but uh, it is difficult to use in uh, existing city. So uh, we uh, try to find the new uh, urban infrastructure model and new urban facility that can help robots to work better. So thank you for your uh, for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Johnson Young. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Myonga Hung. Dr. Myonga, please unmute. Yeah, hello, you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hello, yeah. Uh, my name is Myonga Hong. I'm a director of the NIA, and today I will present Digital New Deal of Korea. Well, the world community is facing an unprecedented crisis with the spread of COVID-19. Well, I think the largest impact is on our economy. So uh, global economic shock caused by the COVID-19 is the worst since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Well, um, in order to deal with this crisis, the Korean government laid out a uh, Korean New Deal, uh, which is an uh, new strategy for national development. It aims to minimize economic shock by creating jobs and also uh, help the country get back onto the normal path, growth path. And it also aims to build the foundation for adapting to and leading structural changes. Yeah, uh, this is what Korean New Deal looks like. Uh, it helps Korea's great transition toward becoming a leading nation. Korean New Deal consists of three uh, elements. One is Digital New Deal. The second one is Green New Deal and Stronger Safety Net. Well, we have selected 10 major uh, projects for Korean New Deal. Um, for Korean New Deal, for digital one, uh, we have data dam, AI government, smart healthcare. And for Green New Deal, we have uh, green remodeling, energy uh, production, and eco-friendly vehicles. And uh, for the project converging digital and Green New Deal, we have uh, four projects, including green and smart school. Well, there are two pillars of transformation. Uh, digital New Deal and Green New Deal. You know, digital technologies are key to successful low carbon industry. And uh, we use digital technologies to build a large scale ICT infrastructure. Uh, and also um, uh, we hope, we think that uh, this will lead to the achievement of the Green New Deal and therefore the digital industry and green industry can be a win-win relationship. There are four key areas of the digital New Deal. The first one is to strengthen DNA ecosystem. DNA stands for data network and AI. The second one is digitalize educational infrastructure. The third one is promote non-contact industries. And the fourth one is to digitalize social overhead capital. Well, um, in the area of strengthening the DNA ecosystem, we have five major projects. The first one is to expand the 5G and AI convergence. You know, um, it is quite uh, necessary to accelerate uh, converging 5G and AI to, you know, um, create new digital products and services that are closely related to the lives of the citizen. And the second one is data labeling. 
you know, um, we build data and open up and use. And for an AI to become smart, it needs a lot of data. Um, manual data processing is necessary so that AI can understand the content of the data. So it is called uh, as uh, data labeling. Data labeling uh, can create a lot of jobs because it can be done by both men and women of all ages. The third one is uh, intelligent government. You know, uh, we will implement a cloud-based public working environment. We will move uh, you know, all governmental and, and public uh, institutions to cloud. And we will build national 5G networks in, uh, across all government offices. And the fourth one is to build national cybersecurity system. You know, as digital transformation accelerates, um, cybersecurity threats are likely to increase. So uh, we will reorganize the national cybersecurity system. The fifth one is uh, to operate the Digital Competence Center. We will build Digital Competence Center so that anyone can, uh, you know, get the benefit of the digital technologies, regardless of uh, income class of their own. Um, this is about the AI government. Uh, you know, uh, we will improve 5G-based network for government work and move all the administrative and public institutions to cloud and also expand provision of non-contact services. Uh, in the area of digitalizing educational infrastructure, we have two main projects. The so one is uh, to create digital education environment. We will make a digital in education environment so that uh, all elementary, middle, and high schools can, you know, um, receive the same education, uh, both online and offline. And we also uh, uh, will develop online education content. We will implement high performance Wi-Fi in all classrooms in elementary, middle, and high schools. Uh, and also we will uh, install uh, wireless access points in about uh, 12,000 uh, elementary, middle, and high schools. Uh, and we hope that will uh, lead to creation of uh, 10,000 new jobs. Well, um, the area of promoting non-contact industries uh, has come under the spotlight since the pandemic. And we will build uh, non-contact infrastructure to uh, strengthen uh, you know, a lot of fields uh, which are re related to the daily lives of the people. And we will build a smart infrastructure for education and healthcare. And we will expand the uh, remote working for uh, small and uh, you know, medium-sized companies. And we also uh, expand the e-business. Well, last but not least, uh, the area of uh, digitalization of SOC is quite important. Um, we uh, try to use digital technologies when we uh, build a new infrastructure or change uh, management operation framework of the existing ones. So uh, we use digital technologies to enhance uh, safety and management efficiency. Yes, uh, the Korean government will invest $52.8 billion by 2025. And we will also, uh, uh, we hope that uh, this will create, uh, you know, 900,000 jobs by 2025. Yeah, this is the last slide of my presentation. 
Uh, let me uh, give you some explanations about the requirements for success of the Korean New Deal. You know, uh, we are facing a lot of limitations in uh, implementing the uh, strategy. Uh, however, Korean government uh, is trying to take the lead in creating the demand and uh, we also uh, inject government money to uh, prime the pump. And then uh, with the private sector make investment, we expect fast recovery from recession and solutions to the employment issues. While doing so, uh, there will be uh, you know, um, discrimination or exclusion within the society. That's why government should try hard to bridge the gap. So uh, I believe that uh, when these three elements are well balanced, uh, Korean digital New Deal will be successful. And I hope um, you found what I have shared with you all to be of use and interest. Thank you. Um, very interesting. Thank you very much uh, for a great presentation. I would like uh, to invite Sangyeon Yang now. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can also uh, see your screen. Uh, nice to meet everyone. Uh, my name is Sanghyun uh, Jang. Uh, I'm director of higher education and academic research and international Depart uh, cooperation department at CARIS. Uh, CARIS is under the Ministry of Education. Uh, we are charging for using uh, ICT in education, uh, national level. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me and I'm uh, honored to present at this webinar. My uh, title is Digital Transformation of Education in the COVID-19 Era. Uh, I'd like to uh, focus on public uh, infra system for distance learning in the middle of respond to COVID-19 in uh, Korea. Uh, this is my uh, content of presentation. Uh, uh, still now, uh, the world is suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the beginning of COVID-19, all school was closed. But Korea successfully in quarantine in a democratic way. Uh, Korea's uh, rate of death to those of confirmed case was very low. Uh, in Korea, we have approximately 10,000 schools in 17 metropolitan and province. Seven of them are special in metropolitan city. So 10 uh, provinces have rural area like uh, uh, CIS country, uh, Korea also more than 70% uh, are mountains. Uh, we call uh, before uh, Corona until last year, now uh, after Corona. Uh, you know, uh, humankind has realized tools since the beginning of our existence. Over time, innovation, has changed through the tool that we have used. It. The innovation of truth is the very definition of technology. Today, ICT represents one of the major type of such innovation. For example, the invention of the smartphone has helped to divert us from the use of a personal computer in order to check our emails. We don't have to go to PC. Uh, with the development of uh, AI and big data and cloud computing, it is uh, predicted the 
robot will eventually replace many tasks that humans um, currently do. Uh, it will also be uh, actively used uh, in education. So we have to do digital transformation transformation uh, in education. Uh, even though uh, we try to adapt technology in education, but education is not changed rapidly. However, the result of the uh, coronavirus uh, changed it all at one stroke. As you can see, school has empty lecture rooms. Professor and teacher have to teach with distance and use technology. We cannot help uh, using uh, education technology to distance education. Uh, we can, we uh, usually call that is the edutech. So edutech can overcome uh, education limitation about and time and distance and economy, etc. cetera. Uh, we live in the world of ultra connected and ultra intelligent. We should expand the traditional classroom to cyberspace and all rights. I would like to uh, introduce the online uh, school opening decision-making process and preparation in Korea uh, last uh, in March. Korea used to start to uh, school in March. The Ministry of Education and the Center for Disease Control closely cooperated and delayed the school opening. The government uh, have decided open school by online class with three steps after two weeks of postponing the school opening and two weeks later, online school was announced and preparation beginning. And in order to uh, do distance uh, education, the most important uh, uh, thing is the online uh, platform. We have to use online education uh, platform. So we prepared two platforms for K-12 online school opening. Um, our organization, Keris, uh, was in charge of elementary school. And EBS, um, EBS is the education broadcast system, uh, was in charge of middle uh, and high school. A case used to be a uh, charge uh, for using in ICT in education. Uh, and also Keris uh, has various online uh, learning platform and digital textbook and education management information system and uh, education finance management system are uh, the example. Uh, from uh, now, uh, I will speak about how to systematically uh, pre preparation for online classes, uh, but I uh, don't have enough time. So I will uh, explain about uh, main uh, point. Uh, the biggest uh, reason for uh, choosing online classes is that 1990.7% uh, uh, of homes in Korea can uh, access the internet. Uh, as I know, uh, already uh, mentioned before uh, presenter. Uh, in order uh, for all uh, 6 million students to access at the same time. So uh, the CARES uh, e-learning site, uh, which was used by uh, 470,000 people, uh, we have to be uh, expanded by seven times within two weeks. We have to be expanded by uh, 300 times within a month. And and there are uh, 495 uh, pilot schools for online learning. Teachers and school uh, voluntarily created and operated various uh, service. Uh, 
for online classes, the most important factor is teacher's capacity. So uh, community was created with one representative teacher in every school. Here, uh, they communicated directly with the Ministry of Education and CARES and EBS to share their thought and current situation. And we have, we uh, support uh, school on site to share information uh, related to setting up uh, management effectively holding classes online and provide guideline for online classroom for teacher, 10 uh, rules example, uh, for example, um, attendance and event evaluation, uh, et cetera. And I will uh, explain about type of classes and how to use content at that time. Class type are operated real time interactive class, uh, like uh, uh, this webinar. So teacher and student uh, use the Zoom uh, and et cetera tools. And content oriented class and task oriented class. And I will uh, skip uh, more uh, some uh, detail. And uh, Korea Ministry and uh, Caris also uh, have support college and universities because uh, some uh, college didn't have a learning management system. So we uh, give uh, platform uh, freely and quickly. And we uh, also uh, uh, will uh, construct 10 uh, local uh, support uh, center for college and universities. And finally, we can uh, face uh, various uh, challenges. For example, uh, digital divide and how to support uh, disadvantaged student and technical assistance for students and parents and teachers. Uh, but uh, I, I don't have enough time uh, to, I will uh, skip uh, detail. Uh, totally, uh, the uh, conclusion is as uh, follow. The most uh, important thing is that all uh, stakeholders have a consensus that education should not stop. Although uh, facing a crisis, this chance should be used on, as an opportunity for educational digital uh, transformation. Uh, some people said now is the uh, golden time to uh, innovate and change our education. And also, uh, in order to provide uh, AI uh, education in preparation for the post industrial revolution, it must be based on platform and big data. Although uh, it has been equipped with the coronavirus, it must be developed as a gold, um, golden opportunity to implement uh, intelligent personalized learning. Uh, we again realize the importance of uh, international cooperation due to the coronavirus. Uh, therefore, a joint effort uh, should be further strengthened to solve the educational issue of each uh, country. I hope that my, con my presentation has helped you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Sang Yeon Jiang for an interesting uh, presentation. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Duyon Kim for, for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, can you all guys hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you, but can you just say a bit loud? Uh, uh, how is this now? Yes, this is perfect.
Okay, so my presentation is on the po po post COVID 19 smart working environment, uh, uh, in particular, the case of the Korean government and affiliated organizations in general. So uh, let me begin since uh, we don't have too much time. So let me begin by introducing what we in Korea think about smart work and compared to the world. So the US has the uh, Telework Enhancement Act of 2010 specifying roles, responsibilities, and expectations for all federal executive ag agencies. So they have that. Japan also has something uh, similar, but I think uh, they've actually announced it during their, in their 2018 information and communication white paper, which used telex, telework as a flexible way of working through ICT. So Korea is a little, little uh, very similar, but I think we take a little bit more of a broader uh, approach. So we think of it as a working arrangement, not limited by time and space, including working from home, working on the move uh, by utilization of ICT. And the Ministry of Interior and Safety also established many uh, uh, smart work centers that, that, that uh, use actually based on this principle. So uh, there are many different types of smart work as well. As you can see, we can, and smart work center is one of them. We can also use mobile offices, working at home, smart office, and flexible working hours. Okay, so uh, in terms of the post-COVID-19 working environment, uh, one of the biggest changes that happened in Korea was that the government mandated uh, during the peak pandemic, I think uh, February, March, and, and, <clears throat> and April of this year, which was one of the very first big outbreak. And uh, you heard that from the previous presentation as well. A one third of the workforce was required to work at home. And at the same time, we also expanded and uh, recommended for people to use smartphone centers close to their home or business trip locations if needed. And this actually required, uh, as, as you know, we, Korea government normally has a very strict requirement, especially in terms of security, when you want to work outside or when you want to work outside of a normal government uh, network. So we really needed to increase our non-face-to-face -face working system. And the basic premise of the uh, non face to face work system in Korea is use of government VPN. And as you know, VPN actually establishes a secure one to one connection. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but can you please be a little bit more loud so that our interpreters will, uh, will, will hear and then they can translate? Okay. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to try to boost the mic. Mm -hmm. How about now? How is it now? Perfect, perfect. Okay. At any rate, so uh, at the height of the pandemic and social distance measures, which is, as I mentioned, is before the first outbreak, government VPN subscribers increased by 358%, and the actual usage users uh, using government VPN increased nearly 800%. At the same time, we practice the social distancing measure uh, in the workplace, where in all meeting rooms and government offices and smart work centers have increased seating spacing, also alternating seating with locks in place and uh, with mandatory use of masking as well. So this uh, next slide shows you a basic diagram of, of our non-face-to-work uh, system. As you can see on top, we have government network on the left, and internet and mobile on the right. And uh, the connecting path here, as you can see, it, it depends depending on where you are. For example, when you're on business trips or when you're in the field, when you're at home, is the blue arrow you see here to our government VPN. And it connects directly to your administrative information system of Korea, and where you can access uh, web office, for editing uh, documents, uh, G Drive, which is a, our own uh, version of the government drive, uh, cloud drive, and of course, our major uh, on not a government work system. And uh, in the internet, we also provide government email and website usage. Uh, mobile actually is a separate platform uh, in Korea. We have what we call the mobile electronic government common infrastructure, which is actually a suite of uh, security uh, apps that needs to be 
installed on your web uh, mobile device where we can use all of our uh, e-government related apps. So if you are in the office, uh, you can, you know, with the web, web editing, you can simultaneously edit, uh, provide immediate feedback for the seating arrangement. Right, uh, uh, one thing to say about this, this is actually not everything here is being implemented, but this is one of the, uh, I guess, future aspects that we want to work toward. And three seating is uh, one of those things. Right now, most seats are usually uh, very fixed, but uh, once we get all this system going, uh, we, we are trying to implement a more free seating environment. And anyway, as you can see, uh, meetings can be uh, done paperless meetings using PC laptops, uh, also supporting immediate recording. On site, uh, you can use uh, portable devices, and, and, and of course, 5G. 5G is on, uh, upcoming, but it's one of our pilot projects. And you can use, uh, you can also use memo reporting, or document approval, and all those stuff. Uh, and the home, very similar to as well, but uh, this is mostly using PC and not really not too many portable devices, but mostly PCs and laptops with uh, GPU VPN installed. So uh, in the beginning, a uh, GVPN as was actually one of those niche systems which wasn't really utilized very much by the Korean government. And uh, from what I know, each department maybe had one notebook that they could take outside and had GVPN clearance and approval. So when this uh, working at home uh, became a huge policy and direction that we were going towards, uh, we needed to greatly improve uh, network infrastructure, especially in terms of providing GVPN services. So this is one of the things that was ongoing with our government data center. Uh, now I'm going to give you a brief uh, overview of our government video conferencing system, which is a, a very important component of a non face-to-face working environment. Uh, for the government of Korea, we have basically two conferencing uh, VC systems. One is the uh, government video conferencing, what we call common infrastructure, and the other is the Onnara e PC uh, video conferencing system. So the uh, common infrastructure mostly focuses on hardware, Codex and hardware or uh, video conferencing rooms with hardware codex. And uh, this, both actually systems were developed in 2013. And uh, the Onara EMPC uh, video conference system is actually a software based solution. And uh, it has all, it, that, and, and, and it connects all government officials and agencies as well. But it, has, it actually has two components. Uh, one system dedicated solely for to be used within the government network, and one system to be used on the internet to uh, use with other uh, public agencies and some guest participation from outside as well. For now, though, most of these are kind of closed systems uh, as a, uh, uh, you know, the National Intelligence Service in Korea, we have to go through all of the security checks to be able to implement these systems. But uh, in terms of the hardware of our VC uh, common infrastructure, nearly, we have nearly 800 VC rooms that are connected here, and uh, it encompasses almost all uh, central government and uh, let's see, local autonomies, including all of our 17 uh, municipalities and provinces. The software system allows for uh, thousands of uh, users and Thousands of concurrent users as well. And this is something that usually used for uh, people that and agencies that do not have a dedicated VC room. So, in terms of video conference usage, uh, we saw a great uptake in the use of VC common infrastructure and on that AMPC, uh, respectively 475% and 326% at the height of the pandemic and social distancing uh, era, which around, I'd say, March. February, March, and a bit of April. At the same time, we also had a huge uptake in the newly uh, in different agencies trying to uh, build VC rooms and connect to our government VC infrastructures as uh, many of the important face-to-face -face meetings, including uh, our uh, public agency or public agency, let's say, uh, management evaluation was also conducted, which was normally conducted face-to-face, -face, we're all transitioned online as well. So uh, many, many agencies were kind of forced to create VC rooms. 
So we have uh, over 166 million KD resources just this year. At the same time, uh, with the explosion of users on the PC platform, uh, we had to renegotiate uh, re extra licenses for more subscribers and third users for the Anara EMT situation as well. And uh, in terms of, I'd say, awareness and the satisfaction uh, that people have over the DC, uh, I've actually been in charge of the, uh, our uh, DC common infrastructure for a few years, and we do surveys every year. And just this, this year's survey, which actually just ended a few weeks ago, uh, we've actually asked uh, our respondents to compare how they felt about uh, video conferencing before and after COVID. And as you can see, uh, an overwhelming majority, 84.4%, uh, uh, that they were very satisfied or very satisfied with the use of VC. So we're, we're seeing a lot of uptake and people are becoming more and more used to the use of VC, whereas in before, a lot of people actually complained about how actual face-to-face -face meetings was probably more effective and, and they prefer those things. As, uh, and this is, has also has to do with how the Korean co working culture is very uh, centered around face-to-face -face meetings. Anyway, uh, to close off uh, my uh, presentation, I'm just going to introduce some uh, projects that we're working on for a uh, smart work environment. Uh, one of these is a uh, desktop as a service transition for internet PCs in government offices. Uh, right now, uh, in, the go in government offices, using uh, a PC usage in the government, actually, each civil servant has two separate PCs. Uh, one PC that connects directly to the internal government network and one PC connected to, to the internet. So this is kind of not very efficient uh, and also not very, uh, very cost effective. And so uh, right now we have a pilot project, ongoing pilot project that targets around 200 users. And we're trying to transition into a virtual environment where we use desktop as a service to simulate another OS on top of uh, the host OS that connects to the internet, so we, we only have to use one PC. And uh, we're in the process of analyzing the viabilities of open source OS and software for this approach. Another one I can say is uh, we have also a huge project that supports uh, constructing VC systems and rooms for especially targeting SMEs and startups so that they can actually work better in the non face to face working environment. So we have over, uh, we're targeting over 1,500 VC systems that will be built in uh, strategic business hubs, including techno parks, uh, industry alliances, and association headquarters, and preserves. Uh, we have about 1,500 small to medium-sized VC rooms with five large VC rooms for large-scale international events and all those kinds of things. So this project supports uh, funding for VC equipment, software solutions, uh, soft, uh, smart work booth, et cetera. And uh, this is an extra slide that I just put in. And this is uh, one of the uh, uh, projects to expand the government VC common infrastructure in 2021. I mentioned before that uh, at this point, the uh, government uh, common infrastructure is mostly centered around hardware uh, based uh, VC rooms, and it has very limitations in how we connect with PC and mobile. So uh, from 2021, we are hoping to use uh, HTML5 capable web browsers with the industry standard WebRTC protocol so to support every PC and mobile platforms to connect and use uh, WebRTC, connect to uh, uh, hardware and uh, software. So, we're also looking to uh, expand capacity to allow up to 1,400 concurrent, concurrent connections using a multi-point control unit, which is a hardware unit. But that's using a, it's a centralized approach using MCU. But we, all, we are going to use a, a hybrid approach where web RPC clients can connect to each other on a near infinite basis as a, there's no restrictions in the number of users. And we're also using a hybrid method that uses the uh, SFU SFU method, which uh, uses uh, instead of uh, 
at this time, there are different ways of you know, implementing uh, multipoint uh, VC. One uh, method is to is the MCU method, which actually both our hardware and also on our uh, software-based uh, VC also uses the same approach, wherein one host actually controls all of the, uh, uh, the uh, video and multimedia data. So it does all the encoding and decoding as well, which is actually very heavy use in terms of resources. The SFU method actually only, only transmits the data streams to different, and, and it directs the data streams to different things, different uh, users. So it doesn't involve actual use of, of uh, CPU resources that much, which actually is more of a recent thing. Um, so I believe uh, with the use of the hybrid uh, system, we'll be able to allow many, many more users to use more high quality and standard ways of VC. Anyway, uh, there is also an ISP, or uh, Information Strategy Planning, or, or BPR, depending on how you look at it, that has been done to assess how uh, to change the Korean uh, government way of working to be more smart and to allow for more flexible use of uh, systems. And it's, and it's actually centered around, I believe, while the result hasn't fully been uh, publicized, one of the key uh, aspects is the use of uh, the concept of unified communication. So we're also looking to connect our uh, WebRTC protocol uh, enable VC common infrastructure to support unified communication by linking to any messengers apps that are being used by our public servers. And uh, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, for an interesting uh, presentation. And I would like to thank all the speakers for actually answering all the questions. I can see that there are, they have almost answered all the questions from social media and also from, uh, uh, from, from Zoom. And then there are so much interest I can see and a lot of questions are coming. So there is one question uh, which is remaining. Uh, are you willing to share uh, with your digital solutions for education where you have AI? If possible, send us more detailed information about applying AI in education, please. Uh, real practical examples. Any speaker would like to share anything on uh, use of AI in the education sector? Uh, I'd like to answer. Uh, my uh, organization uh, is under the Ministry of Education and uh, we have uh, several uh, educational uh, management system. For example, education uh, uh, national education uh, information uh, system that uh, is to uh, uh, accumulate to, uh, educational data on system. So we uh, uh, now uh, study and research uh, to predict, predict uh, some uh, dropout rate uh, of school. Uh, for example, we uh, uh, analyze analy 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 uh, some educational data. For example, they uh, uh, score and attendance rate and a uh, relationship between uh, child, uh, student. Then we uh, uh, use the uh, uh, AI algorithm, uh, for example, on some uh, deep learning or something. Then we can uh, predict the uh, student to uh, drop drop out drop out uh, some uh, student. And also we uh, some uh, uh, recommend system uh, in learning education content. So if uh, a student uh, the, uh, under the uh, goal level, then we can uh, recommend the, uh, Adapted uh, content for uh, student. 
we use the uh, AI algorithm in uh, their uh, system. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there is one question on, on social media. Uh, can you explain more about the AI government? Uh, any speaker, if uh, you want to comment. Yeah, I like to answer. Yeah. Okay. Thank well, you, um, you know, uh, Korean e-government has been recognized as a, a highly advanced one. Uh, but we still face some limitations. Um, as Korea is so uh, focused on uh, enforcing uh, security policies, so uh, the networks in the government are uh, separate into one for internal and the other one for external work. So um, uh, this is causing a lot of inconvenience and make it difficult to respond fast to any, uh, you know, new demand. So uh, uh, we're going to move all administrative and public institutions to cloud. And, uh, you know, we will use, uh, you know, expand using the cloud uh, to build 5G national network access, uh, you know, uh, for all government offices. Yeah, that's what we are, uh, you know, trying to do for the AI government. Uh, thank you very much. That's very, very interesting. Uh, there is another question on social media. Uh, can you explain about the data dam? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, let me explain uh, more about that. Uh, you know, data dam project is uh, to build something like the Hoover Dam in the Great Depression. And, uh, um, you know, um, back then, uh, infrastructure contributed to economic productivity and uh, employment. Just like that, uh, we build a data dam project, you know, um, to develop new services based on uh, data. And um, uh, such as a uh, building data uh, labeling project, as I uh, explained during my presentation, and uh, also uh, building data uh, platforms. So uh, we think that data will uh, form the base for, uh, you know, in preparation for the next generation uh, as a uh, high speed internet did in the past. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. There are more questions coming, uh, but we can follow up afterwards to, to, because of the time limitations, we cannot uh, uh, pop all the questions, but we can, uh, we can follow up. We can ask the speakers and then we can uh, send to the respective uh, audience. Uh, thank you to all our speakers and to everyone who have who has uh, tuned in from around the world to support this incredible discussion today. The learnings we can take from the Korean experience are significant, and we greatly appreciate everyone who has taken the time to join us today and share experience and wisdom. May I please invite Professor Dr. Jean Pere Offred, President of uh, International Academy of CIO, to offer some closing remarks. Uh, th thank you very much, Sharkan, and, and thank you to the National Information Society Agency for coordinating the speakers and for all of the wonderful speakers and their insights on the Korean experience. Uh, thank you also to uh, World Bank, University of Central Asia, UNDP, and State Committee on ICT uh, of Kyrgyzstan, and especially many thanks for, for all of you for having joined uh, today and this evening. Uh, thank you, Sharkan. Uh, thank you, Alfred. I would like to now close today's session by echoing the appreciation for all involved in making today happen. We started today by highlighting the partnership that has made today's event possible between the National Information Society Agency of Korea, State Committee for Information Technology and Communications, the International Academy of CIO, the World Bank, United Nations Development Program, and the University of Central Asia. In my role as CIO at UCA, I am well aware of the power of digital technology to transform organizations, economies, and lives. I feel fortunate and honored to be able to work with like-minded organizations to help make digital transformation a reality for the region of Central Asia. It is humbling to learn from all of you today 
and I hope these conversations continue in many forms in the future. To all of you who have tuned in to this event, we bid you farewell. Please stay safe and please look out for more events from all of the partners here today, in particularly further events in the workshop series led by the World Bank's Digital Resilience uh, Program. Thank you everyone and have a very nice day and good afternoon to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.